Hey guys, welcome back to We Watch a Movie. I am Mike, and this past weekend I watched Missing in the movie theater. Liked it a lot, got it at Target, real nice. I gave it a 7.5, I enjoyed it. It's the sequel to Searching. I put the quick review up on our TikTok, but it got me thinking. I wanted to get real deep in desktop horror films, and not just any desktop horror thriller films, but the truly legit ones. You've got a whole bunch of cyber horror films. You've got Fear.com, Virtuosity. I know it's not a horror film, but I just love it. And tons of other internet horror, cyber found footage movies, but I'm thinking about the pure ones, the ones that take place in almost at least their entirety on an actual desktop. And there are fewer movies in that subgenre than you would think. And these are gonna be my top 10. So if you're looking for a couple movies like Searching or Missing, which will be included in this list as well, like Unfriended, which will be included in this list as well, and as well as maybe some other ones you haven't heard of, stay tuned, have a soda pop, hang out, and let's get nasty together. Real nasty. If you like talking about horror movies and getting nasty, and uh, if you like Evil Dead, Scream, Halloween, Friday the 13th, updates, all that stuff like that, and just getting deep in the in the genre of horror and having good times in, in the pantaloons, then uh, consider clicking the subscribe button and the bell so that you're notified when we make videos like this, and then we can do it together, Steve. Yeah! Number 10, 2002's The Collingswood Story. Now, this is one I had never heard of in my life. It features a separated and lonely couple video chatting throughout the entirety of the movie. The guy, who looks just like Brody from Mallrats, by the way, buys her a few minutes with a video chat psychic for her birthday, who looks like your grandma is cosplaying as Neo from The Matrix, and she quickly disturbs them both as she informs them that her home that she's currently staying in is haunted by a man who drowned his whole family in a bathtub. If you are old as fuck like me, I'm 37 years old, and you remember the time growing up before the internet, and then when the internet came, and you remember sitting there staring at your computer listening to that. <coughs> but, uh, oh god, I think I just died. Those were good times, man. They were terrible times. I remember being so excited just to get mail. It's like, you've got mail. I'm like, oh my god, what is it? I can't wait. It was a weird time to be alive. Age, sex, location. But anyways, yeah, if you remember that time, then the Collingswood story will have some charm in it for you. It's a movie that feels a lot like the Blair Witch in that it's got tons and tons of creepy vibe and atmosphere and weird fuck shit going on. But in the end, it does give you the old cinematic blue balls because they don't have enough money to pay for an actually good climax. I guess in that same line, it'd be like paying for sex and the hooker was really good about talking about sex. But when you looked at her pimp's menu, the only option you could afford was having her kick you in the nuts and call you Steven. Gator don't play no shit. You, hear, you feel me? Gator never been about that. Never, never been about playing no shit. The special thing about the Collingswood story is just watching the blast from the internet pass, watching this old school web workout. And there's funny things about it because they're video chatting through the whole thing. And I promise you, the, the picture coming through is crystal clear. That did not exist back then at all. It's flawless. They pretty much predicted chat, chat roulette and Omegle and all that shit, the way that they make this internet work. And the internet just has these weird ass capabilities that just did not exist back then at all. And it's hilarious to watch. But from the desktop to the way everything looks, it's just... It's just a blast from the past, man. But not a great movie overall, no. But just, again, the whole aesthetic of the movie is just like the Blair Witch Project brought to you by AOL. She's basically in a perpetual state of, oh my god, what? And he'll be like, hey, don't go in that clearly haunted room right there. And she'll be like, I have to because my pencil's in there. And the majority of the scare attempts were about as corny of 62% of Fred Durst's raps, if I'm being kind to the movie and Fred Durst. So that's number 10. Number nine is Ratter. I watched this one way back in the day when I was still working my desk job and I was filming in the middle of the night when nobody was in the building. Hey guys, Mike here with We Watched a Movie and there's a gnarly storm going on outside. So if you hear thunder, I didn't shit my pants. I just watched a movie called Ratter. So what it is, it's basically this really attractive girl, which you'll find is a theme in these movies. When you've got a movie that's based solely on a desk pop, top, desk pop. Hey girl, you hungry? Fuck you! When you got a movie that's like 90% the same person's face staring at you in a desktop, I mean, I get it, but like 90% of these movies feature a, an attractive and charismatic girl. And Ratter is no different. She moves to college to get away from a crazy boyfriend, and this guy who's stalking her has hacked her phone, he has hacked her desktop, and you know all these, these movies and stuff and people that tell you, hey, even the director of the FBI apparently puts tape over his computer uh, camera 
because hackers can access your computer cameras and watch you. He's accessed everything to be able to watch her and you don't know who this person is the entire movie, but you're watching the stalker slowly and slowly get more ballsy, if you will, and start doing more and more shit to the point where he's sneaking in her house and like watching her sleep to laying next to her while she's sleeping. And you just know that this is gonna culminate in something awful. And then the, at the very end of the movie happens and it leaves you kind of shook. You're like, oh God, that just, that felt real and I did not enjoy it. And what the fuck happened, Greg? Ratter kind of gave me the willies and Ashley Benson was great in it. Uh, the only problem with, with Ratter is not a lot going on. You really got to work for that payoff, all right? The gift is the journey. But if you're looking for more of a quick punch in the dick, number eight is gonna be a segment of VHS that's about 20 to 22 minutes long or so, and it's called The Sick Thing That Happened to Emily When She Was Younger. The entire thing takes place through a video chat. There's just two squares the entire movie. It's hers, and then it's his down here in the bottom. He's a med school guy, and they're, they're separated because he's in med school, and she's back at home, and she's dealing with weird shit. Her arm is itchy, and she's pretty sure that, this is a lot like the Collingswood story, actually, in that she's pretty sure that the uh, the apartment that she is, is staying at is haunted. Now, I can't say too much about this one without giving it away because there is a wild shit fuck crazy twist at the end of this, but the majority of it at least takes place as her walking around with her webcam on showing him that, no, this place is actually haunted. And her boyfriend, who's a total doucher, just completely unexcited or unmoved by anything at one point, and this was a great scene, this fucking thing comes out, and it's like a little kid or whatever, and comes up and runs on camera, and they show it, you see it. Runs on the camera, grabs the door, and slams it back. And it scares the shit out of you. And it, I mean, it comes quick, and she's talking, all of a sudden this little fucker's like, tiptoe through the tulips, grabs the fucking door and slams it, and you're going, oh no! No, I literally did, I scared my dog. And the best part is, again, it doesn't lead to where you're thinking, there's a nice little twist in there. A little fucking wackadoo this one is. There's another thing involving, if you know what I'm talking about, in the arm, <laughs> Oh my God, it's gross. She's like picking at a scab and she's she's starting to go crazy. So she's like super picking at one point. And we've all had something that we've picked at that we weren't supposed to pick at. You know what I mean? Like whether it be a pimple or like whatever. So you get the psyche behind it and it makes it even more fucked up because there's a giant goddamn hole in her arm. And she's just like, oh, oh, oh. And you're just watching it happen. And there's no warning. She's like, hey, look at this thing. And you're like, what the fuck? Number seven is gonna be The Den. I'd never heard of this one either, and it's pretty damn good. This chat roulette or Omegle version of desktop horror features Elizabeth, played by Melanie Papilia, Papalia, who acquires a grant to do a study for her college degree to spend weeks chatting with people on one of these sites and tracking how many meaningful discussions she can have and what she's learning from doing it. Guess what she learned? It's all dicks. People just standing there and flexing and furiously jacking it to a giant stuffed dick that actually somehow shoots cum out of the top of its head <laughs> all the way down to these two teenagers asking to see her boobies. <laughs> it's all about dicks. Uh, and uh, there's a Nigerian prince there that tries to steal her money as well. She eventually witnesses a brutal murder and it's pretty gnarly. This person who doesn't have their cam on keeps trying to contact her and all of a sudden the camera comes on and these dudes in ski masks take this girl who's got duct tape on her, slam her head down and then like just in just the most heinous way right there on a laptop saw at her neck and it's super disconcerting you're like okay we're on the fucking roller coaster now this guy's hacked into all of her stuff or these people have hacked into all of her stuff and including filming her having sex with her boyfriend just like just really good camera angles on her having sex with her boyfriend and then they email it to everybody in her friends list. Like really fucked up stuff like that. But then it, it, it turns nastier quicker than a Bloodhound Gang album because all of a sudden her boyfriend gets abducted, her friends are being abducted and or killed as this person gets closer and closer and closer to her. And then it turns into kind of a slasher because this person or people get more and more crafty with how they're doing things and you start to see someone show up in this mask that's kind of a mix between potato sack man from the strangers and like the collector but you see this person showing up and and, and doing fucked up stuff to people and the lead's great in the movie and it all sells really well and the the killers are aggressive as shit in the movie more so than a lot of these movies that are more slow burn these killers jump out and start doing shit immediately. So it, it's it's kind of a nice change of pace. You don't really don't have to wait for it a lot in the den. Why does that sound like a sexual thing? Now you go on and make me some scramby eggs, get in the den and wait for it in the den. <laughs> <laughs> Keep talking to me like that, Joelle. I'm gonna take you in the back and fuck you. And the dick jokes make for some pretty great comedic relief. What do you what do you want from me? I I like dicks. Dicks dick jokes. Dick 
jokes. Jokes jokes about dicks. Choking on dicks. J j jokes about dicks. The final act of the din goes a little bit mid-2000s heavy metal ending and breaks down a bit as things get far too action-oriented and sort of hardcore Henry and, and a little bit unbelievable, but you do have to admire their willingness to stick to this, this roller coaster ride. Things keep escalating and escalating and escalating, and they're just like, fuck you, we're going for it. So it kind of falls on its face a little bit in the end, but it's one I definitely recommend if you like desktop horror movies. Uh, this one's got some wild shit in it. Number six is Missing Itself, which spawned the idea for this video in missing it's a sequel to searching but you don't have to see searching to see missing it's its own thing but it does have some nice throwbacks to searching i'll keep this extremely spoiler free on this one since it's a brand new movie it's entertaining i liked it a lot it's pure desktop horror they do some amazing things basically this girl's mom goes missing this teenager she's left alone her mom's missing and she has to use the internet to try to find out what's happened to her the way that this tale goes it's like reading a mystery book on vacation or something like a james patterson thing but you get all the nice stuff that i love about desktop horror which i don't think i mentioned this in the beginning of the video i fucking love this genre because i find it really soothing and i know that sounds fucked up but just the glow of the laptop light the sound of the typing the clicking the itunes all that stuff there's just something even though stuff fucked up is happening on the screen, I love this genre because I find all that so relaxing in the most fucked up of ways. Maybe I just spend too much time on the computer. I don't know. But I love these fucking movies. And this one goes all the way with it. Just like searching, it's all through the desktop. They find really, really ingenious ways to keep the action going on the desktop. Now, sometimes they veer off into phone stuff like that, but not often. But you know, I'm sure if you took a, a, a flashlight to it and scanned it for you know little plot holes, you could find some. But in the moment, it's all coming at you so fast that you don't really have time to so you can just enjoy it for what it is uh, which is a movie with some great twists some ingenious ideas in it and I, I enjoyed missing a lot I thought it was a nice thriller number five another desktop thriller this one is called Profile, and this is a little bit different from all the other ones on the on the list. This one follows an undercover journalist, yet again, a strong-willed, attractive female, who pretends to be bait for an ISIS fighter to recruit her online to become his wife. Their goal is to show how this happens to young British women constantly, who are then sometimes sex trafficked for the soldiers or even stoned to death for trying to escape or for acting improper. And it's really intense because the awesome performances by both Valine Kane and Shazad Latif, who plays the ISIS fighter, trying to to recruit her but what's so intense about it is so he's recruiting her so you're watching him like kind of woo her and she has to pretend to be this sheepish person can't look him in the eyes has to follow all these specific rules while it's going on while meanwhile she's doing this undercover and recording the whole thing but the way you're watching this real-time brainwashing that he's doing like telling her that they're the good guys and he kills all these people a day and, and all this stuff like that but it's for the right reasons and he, and he goes and shows her the house that they'll be living in and wants her to come up there and marry him almost immediately immediately and and is looking her dead in the face and telling her all the things she she must do to like satisfy him and all these things like that but while also teaching her how to cook certain meals and laughing and being all cutesy with her and stuff like that literally indoctrinating her and doing all this fucked up stuff but while being charismatic about it uh, and it's strange because while you're watching it happen, it makes you feel strange inside because this has happened to so many women. But also while you're watching her do this, you're starting to think she's fucking falling for it. She's starting to fall for this guy. And meanwhile, she's spending all of her time doing this. She's not hanging out with her friends. She's not seeing her boyfriend. And you're starting to go, oh, you stupid motherfucker. It's a straight up thriller, but there's something horrific about it. As in the beginning, there were very many miles and layers between her and that danger in that moment. But they kept getting thinner and thinner. Dinner. And the closer he got to discovering who she was, where she was, and how much his whole stick was wearing on her. And it's frustrating because sometimes you want to jump through the, the camera and smack some sense into these characters who are being bafflingly fucking stupid. Uh, but it's definitely a pulse pounder, edge of your seat, really makes you think about some things. Number four, Host. Host is one that came out during the pandemic, and it's so weird because some of these movies that were all about people video chatting and stuff like that did not come out during the pandemic, but Host was the perfect movie for the perfect time. This was the dawn of Zoom. Everybody was doing this, and this movie, most of you guys know it, it took everybody by storm. Perfect running time for a film like this at just over an hour long. It's a fucking ride, man. These friends get together, and they're doing, they get this, 
online psychic to do a seance and they're making fun of it and they're playing games but you don't play games with the fucking dead and you don't build homes on top of indian burial grounds these are things you learn as a horror fan but this group of people gets terrorized by this thing and it's it's it feels almost more found footage than it does desktop horror because it's just literally zoom i mean it's so simple it's quick to the point to the point no fake and, and it all just happens right there so it it doesn't have some of the luster that I love in these desktop horror films with all the click clacking and shit like that, but it makes up for that with the fucking scares that are in this thing, man. Because once you hit the go button on this thing, the jump scares and the fucked up does not stop. Like Pringles. I'd like to thank Pringles, by the way, for sponsoring this video. I'm just kidding. But no, really, it is. It's as addictive as, as Lay's potato chips. And just an amazing fucking ride of a horror movie. Number three for me is going to be Unfriended Dark Web. And if I, there's going to be a lot of people who are like, wait, you put that above movies like Host? And look, I love nine out of the ten movies on this list. I really do. It's just I just love this subgenre. And I get, I get it. Unfriended, much like its predecessor, at least in my opinion was unfairly demonized as being a gimmick horror film but like my youtube career of just cursing at a microphone and drinking as family members sometimes call it is more than meets the eye if i was ex all-american rejects member and app creator matthias who lifts a lost and found laptop from a cyber cafe that he works at he uses a laptop during curiously pre-covid online game night with his friends and they all quickly find out that the computer was used by a member of the dark web who kidnaps young girls and films himself murdering them in the most heinous ways possible think like the found footage tapes from sinister for an online audience. Now the people these murder tapes are made for, the, the dark websters that are watching this shit, all discover that this laptop has been stolen and quickly, with their superhero hacking ability, find everybody in this stream and start to pick them off one by one using the, the means of the internet. And one of the coolest things about the movie is the ways that they come up to get these people dead are fucking fascinating, including if you've seen it, I won't spoil it particularly, but the, the doxing kill where they use, they take control of the audio and use the shotgun clip, that blew me away. That was actually freaky, like deep down, because it felt so legit, like it could actually happen. I mean, for me, between Unfriended and Dark Web, it's very hard to choose because Unfriended, which we will talk about, is more of a paranormal type thing mixed in with a desktop horror. Dark web is something that could really happen. So if like Unfriended is like Halloween or Friday the 13th, then Unfriended Dark Web is like Scream in that it could really happen and it's based on human stuff that happens. Now sometimes in the worst parts of the movie, they do stuff that nobody actually has the ability to do that it kind of gets a little bit corny with a couple of kills and things that happen. It's weird how like you'll see a glitch happen on the screen and someone gets pushed off of a building. You're like, wait, did did they just fucking teleport via computer? I don't know it's not the, what they were trying to say, but sometimes it gets a little too loosey goosey with stuff. But all in all, the fact that these dark web sick fucks exist and do shit like this and there is a place for this online, it's pretty freaky. And add to that the fact that when the computer goes into the dark web, it's like this Minecraft looking thing like floating on this stream and it's just all so creepy. And again, both the dark webs have metric fuck tons of the things I love more than anything about desktop, desktop horror, which is all that satisfying window opening, little sounds and dings. You know, one of the things about these movies being more, I guess, commercial, uh, that works to their benefit is that they have all the fixins when it comes to that shit. And they're just really well oiled machines, even if they do have a little bit of that bubblegum nature to them. They also have a pretty fucking sinister side to them. So if you haven't seen them in a while, I, I recommend rechecking out both the Unfriended movies. But number three is Unfriended Dark Web. Number two for me is Searching. This one goes right back to the thriller genre. I actually watched this for the first time just recently, and I really enjoyed the shit out of it, man. Uh, the acting in it's really good. It's got some of the best acting for sure in these uh, in this subgenre of movies. And John Cho was just fucking awesome, man. As a dad who, who who lost his wife, this movie had me crying in like the first 20 minutes of it. So did Missing, by the way. It got me a couple times. But uh, this they he loses his wife, and a girl loses her mom, and they're just trying to figure out life as they go. And then she goes missing, and he's like 
trying to track her down, but he has to use like what he knows deep down about his daughter to find her. But they've been kind of estranged lately, so it's really uncomfortable and awkward. And just it's it's kind of heart wrenching, but it's also thrilling. Really great twist in it all the way up into the end. You think it's over, it may not be over. But yeah, Searching is a great dad daughter movie. It's a great thriller, and it's got all the desktop fixins once again, just like the Unfriended films do. It's really well made. Number one, we've talked about it already when we talked about Dark Web, but it's unfriended. I struggled with my top five in this list. You could rearrange it any ways you want to. This is just what I was feeling on this day, honestly. But I went with unfriended just because it was the very first one of these that really I saw. When it comes to, again, the full desktop horror movie experience, it's got the horror, it's got all the desktop stuff. Now, what's refreshing about it is while this group of friends seems to be like your typical high school kind of cool kids, there's something refreshing about how authentic they are. All seem while they're all sort of douchey in their own ways they they feel real they feel like their relationships are real and there's something weird about high school horror that when they make the characters feel real when when horror and trauma and stuff like that happens to kids at that age it, it just hits you in a different way it just feels darker i don't know why but it just does now unfriended has some wild gimmicky Blumhousey type horror stuff in it for sure the blender scene i mean come on that thing would have a kill switch there's no way that that would fucking work but then again we're also talking about a ghost who's fucking killing kids through a computer so but even my old ass couldn't help getting caught up in these high school kids drama too while it's all happening because the ghost starts to fuck with them and it and plays this game called never have i ever and it makes them like tell their deepest darkest secrets and then you find out how they've all fucked each other over this whole time and you're like oh man Holy shit, I can't believe Greg fucking did that. And a trigger warning for anybody who's ever been cheated on, because this one's a fucking doozy for that poor bastard. So Unfriended may be made for the Friday Night Blumhouse pop horror crowd, but this does give it the advantage of being one of the more polished films of the subgenre. It also carries with it an underrated mean streak and a sinister side, and it's kind of the cruel intentions of this subgenre. So there it is, my friends. That is my top 10 true thriller slash horror desktop films what I say, what I mean by pure true ones is they actually take place through a desktop at least overall the majority of them are play out on a desktop of which there's not very many there is a couple more that didn't make this list for me but hopefully I gave you guys a couple of recommendations if you're into desktop horror if you watch missing this week and, and want something like that to watch or have seen unfriended or want to go back and watch those movies again hopefully I gave you a little bit of a, a a little feathery butt tickle to go and do that. I hope so. And if I did, and if you enjoyed this, please click like on the video because that helps a lot. And uh, I enjoyed watching these films and researching this to do this video with you all. I enjoy talking movies about this with you all. So please give me your thoughts in the comments down below. And uh, I just love your all's fucking faces. I hope you guys have an amazing week. What'd you think about this list? How would you rank your favorite cyber horror movies or excuse me, desktop horror movies? And uh, who knows, maybe next time we'll take a deep dive into the cyber horror subgenre as well. Love your fucking faces. I hope you guys have an amazing day. Don't fuck with people on the internet. Halloween never ends. Suck my fucking dick. And I don't really care what Blumhouse fucking says. Put him in a box. Go suck a fucking cock. You can say he's dead, but we all know he's not. Yeah. So let's go trick or treating, let's go fucking drinking, let's all go in pumpkin head on VHS, cause Halloween never ends, Halloween never